Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Optimal Health Associates, December 8th, 2020, COVID update. So we're gonna talk about the vaccine tonight, but first let's do some data. Uh, the new cases in Oklahoma were 2,200. There was like 3,200 the day before, 4,200, whatever, the day before 4,500. So basically we've had about 14, not quite 15,000 cases in four days. Uh, so the numbers are going up. Today was a little bit um, lower, but you know, the trend's gonna be 3,000, 3,500 cases a day because we're gonna see the surge from Bedlam and Thanksgiving. So that is a problem because you figure if you use one statistic, which is 8%, or another statistic from Dale Bratzler, Dr. Dale Bratzler at OU, it's 12% of those patients are gonna end up getting hospitalized. And because of that, and the length of time they're in the hospital, that overwhelms our hospital systems. So again, we're at a crisis point. There's hard decisions being made by chief medical officers everywhere on trying to figure out what care they can give to people who don't have COVID and what care they can't give. And so this is a tough situation for all of us. So I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to take your vitamins, your supplements, stay at home, Whenever you can, avoid crowds. If you have to go to the store, try to do the drop order and pick up without going in. Make sure you're wearing a mask. For those of you who continue to not get the mask thing, you're gonna, I hope you don't find out what that means, but I wanna be very clear with you. The mask data gets better all the time, so you should be wearing a mask. Uh, but again, if you're not gonna wear a mask, there's nothing, nothing I can do. So. We're hoping that the state's gonna take some action for societal limitations. Again, not in a broad way, but in a specific way where we're controlling in crowds at sporting events. There really shouldn't be any crowds at sporting events. It needs to be the way the NBA did it. Uh, just look at the uh, what happened with the Jenks football stadium and, and for the state championship and congratulations on winning the game, but total disaster for spreading COVID when you look at those pictures. Yeah, so again, it's all balance and do we want anyone, well, I'm not even gonna go there. So the bottom line is the hospitals are at a saturation point, their staffs, and I think we have to understand what the nurses are going through. The nurses have a code of ethics, a code of honor, and they're being pushed to the limit to take care of these people and, and really hold many of these COVID patients' hands as they die and have to be in on Zoom calls as they say goodbye to their family members from the intensive care. And these nurses are just really overachieving and I can't say enough about them. And if you know a nurse, be nice to them, praise them, thank them. If you know a COVID nurse or ICU nurse, I mean, go out of your way to do nice things for them. I mean, the same applies to the doctors, but the nurses are the ones who do the vast majority of the moment to moment care. Uh, so I would really be focused on them, please. So let's talk about the vaccine. Uh, we're thinking it will be out on December 16th. The first vaccine that's going to be out will be the Pfizer vaccine followed by the Moderna va Moderma vaccine. They're both messenger RNA vaccines, which is a novel concept. And I'm going to go through with you what a messenger RNA vaccine is versus kind of the, kind of the older style vaccines. So a message, so an older style vaccine I'll do first is basically you take a, a, a chip of the viral particle that is from the infectious virus and you have chipped off the part that makes the antibody to inactivate the virus. Or you can deactivate the total viral particle so it's not active but you have to get the whole goal is you have to get the section of the virus that is the where it binds to the receptor in the human so we talk about the spike protein in the coronavirus so it's all about making an antibody to that spike protein so Imagine you took a viral particle, either it was an inactivated viral particle or a piece of a viral particle, you duplicate a lot of it in a lab and you inject it into the person. It's gonna cause a reaction with antibodies and that's what happens. Those vaccines take more time, but they are more studied. 
and they're pretty much the predominant or the only way we've done human vaccines. There's been four vaccine trials with messenger RNA uh, that are stage one trials, uh, Zekia, rabies, influenza, and maybe one other, one other topic. Um, not a lot of data on them, but there wasn't any harm with these stage one trials. So how does a messenger RNA vaccine work versus just giving a protein that you're gonna make an antibody to right away? Well, messenger RNA comes off of DNA in the nucleus. So today we have props, very exciting charger plate that we use for candles at our house. Cell, <laughs> Kim thinks this is horrible, but I, hey, we're being creative here. Nucleus, okay, this is where the DNA is. And so what happens, DNA comes out of here, Does DNA doesn't come out of here. DNA makes messenger RNA, which leaves the nucleus and comes out, hits the endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes, and they make proteins that then influence cell function. Concept, that's how this all works. Messenger RNA comes from DNA, but the messenger RNA causes protein production. So this is the concept with the, with the messenger RNA vaccine. They have taken the piece of the RNA or the piece of the RNA from the COVID virus that codes for the spike protein. So what they do is they then give you a shot of it. In our case, our analogy is a pug dog Christmas ornament. It's been injected into you. It's messenger RNA and it's going woo, -woo, -woo but it's in a lipid envelope so it can diffuse into your cells in the muscle in where you get it in your shoulder. And it goes, woo, woo, and then it goes into the same section in the cell that the messenger RNA would come out of and go to. And it makes it turn on protein production. And so you get a protein spike, which is the same. So this is not like perfect, but you get a protein spike like this coming out of the cell. And it's just the protein spike. So then what happens in my perfect analogy is along comes our dog bone or antibody and reacts, or eventually you make antibodies and react to the protein being on the outside. So you end up with a lot of these guys floating around. So if you then get the virus and it comes in the usual way through your nose, you're going to have these guys floating around and go bonk in your nose to inactivate it. So that's how it all works. But we're, we'll take that again <laughs> through, through again another picture. So basically, you get the RNA shot, a messenger RNA in here, in your shoulder. It's going to diffuse across into your cells because it's the messenger RNA is in a lipid bubble, kind of like an exosome, which I've talked about. That then, the lipid bubble is going to dissolve. The messenger RNA is going to get in eject ejected in the cytoplasm it's going to turn on the part of the organs in the cell or organelles called the endoplasmic reticulum or ribosomes and that's going to produce protein that is going to be the spike protein on the outside again of the cell our pug going hi i'm here and i shouldn't really i don't belong so your immune system is going to react to that and you're going to make antibodies to it to inactivate it so if you have enough of the antibodies floating around, you will have protection. That's the theory. You know, the, the challenge in all of that is, is it actually going to work? Um, probably. I think the data looks good from some inside scoop, because, you know, part of my life is I get inside scoops, is um, it appears to work very well for neutralizing the COVID virus. So safety. So step A, reactions in the shoulder, Mild to moderate with the first one, moderate or a little greater sometimes. And then flu-like illness, especially with the second one. That's what we know so far. Other than that, it seems to be fairly well tolerated. But again, those symptoms are usually within 24 hours. You know, the question is, do we want messenger RNA uh, vaccines? Well, sure we do, as long as they're safe. Do we know this one's long-term safe? We have no earthly idea. The theory is that it probably will be, but we don't know. Because what can what can go what can happen is when you give messenger RNA, one it could get out of cells and if it, and cause other effects, or if it doesn't get absorbed. And number two, if does it make too vigorous a response, so you get too much interferon reaction. 
But again, those are smaller immediate concerns. So when you look at it from a long-term point of view, you know, you just don't know. So it's scary. But we got to look at it like this. This is reality. If you're the first, you know, 50 million people who get it in this country plus are going to be high-risk people. And if you're looking at getting the virus and having a couple percent death rate and a 10 to 15 percent morbidity rate where you get, can get serious medical problems, I think the overall risk-benefit ratio is clearly on the side of the, of the vaccine. So again, if you're a frontline health worker, you're old, older, 56, but let's say 65 and older, you have complex medical issues, you have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, I'm sorry, my phone's on, um, emphysema, lung problems that are significant, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. You, if you get COVID and it could, you're at a much higher risk for death, doing the vaccine immediately makes a lot of sense. And that's who's going to get the first you know, 30 million doses is, is that group. And then at, at a certain point, it will start to roll out to secondary risk groups and then finally tertiary or quaternary risk groups. And by then we're going to have some other vaccines that are going to be a little more standard. But the bottom line is this. It's not associated with infertility, which has been on the, <laughs> the internet. It, it doesn't, there's no major things wrong with it so far. And, and I would tell you if there was, but there's not. So if you're a higher risk pa patient and it's rec you fall within the group that should get it, I would strongly encourage you to get it. I mean, there is no question in my mind that if you're a high risk person in the state of Oklahoma right now, you take the vaccine. We do not have the hospital beds to support you. We are not going to have the ICU beds to support you. We're not going to have the nurses to support you or the doctors to support you if it crests the way it's looking like. So it makes a lot more sense to not get it in the first place. So that's my firm recommendation. If things change with the data, I will change my recommendation. But right now, if you're a high-risk patient and you have the opportunity to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. We can always adjust as we gather data, but we have to offer the best recommendations we can. And so, again, if you're high risk, get the vaccine. But you're the only people who can get the vaccine anyway right now. If you're low risk, you know, we have time to think and look because, I mean, if you're low risk, if you're a kid, you know, you're at, your children are under 16, you're pretty low risk unless you have major medical stuff. Let's wait and see what happens before we vaccinate all those kids. And and likewise, um, we have to think through the ramifications of mandating vaccines for everyone. Again, we want everyone to get it, but I don't think we should be mandating it, but that's my opinion. There will be people who disagree with me, but I do not think we should mandate vaccines for anyone um, because this is going to be gone anyway in April. But I think in order to get it gone, we need at least 150 million people vaccinated in the next three months. So let's hope that gets done. If we get 150 million people vaccinated, then we're going to be in good shape. But that's the that's really the target between now and uh, April 1st is to get that many people knocked out. If we can, um, that will be a major accomplishment. So that's about it. Kim, no questions tonight? I don't have any ready. Okay, so that's just the summary of the vaccine. Hope you understand it. Again, it's what we got. We need it. We don't have the hospital beds or the staff to handle this. And if we don't get the vaccine going, there's going to be a lot of trouble. So, and and as a final note, since a lot of people, maybe not the people watching this, aren't wearing masks or doing anything to help control the spread, that's one of the reasons why we're screwed and we have to do the vaccine, okay? So any, every time you see someone not wearing a mask and you get frustrated about maybe having to do the vaccine thing, it's them, <laughs> okay? It's them. That's why we're being forced to really encourage the vaccine. I mean, it's because of these irresponsible people. And so that's why we're in this boat. So it's kind of funny. The same people not wearing masks are the, often the same people who are the most feminine against the vaccines. But the whole reason the vaccine becomes so much more important is because of the people not wearing masks. So thank you, to all of you, once again, for making the responsible ones of us do the hard stuff. All right. So good night. Thanks.